Well, listen, JC, here I go again. I uh, <clears throat> I went just over at Jack Hall's place uh, uh, looking around a little bit, and I saw a picture of some mighty good-looking biscuits, and it reminded me of this story. Uh, actually, it's a true story. It's a little event in my life when I was a little child. Uh, you know, I wrote it on Facebook. I haven't posted it yet. It's still there, but I got to think and shoot. I got to put this on. <laughs> I got to put this on a video because it is a short story, and so it qualifies for J. Cam poets, uh, poetry and short stories. Uh, so, without any further ado, I'm gonna I'm gonna read it off just like I wrote it on Facebook. It won't be very long, but maybe it'll be interesting to some of you folks. Uh, so, uh, here it goes. Hang on just a second. I got to get this over here skinnied up so I can read it a little bit better. Okay. <clears throat> I didn't name this or anything. <clears throat> I'll name it the Dutch Oven. That's a good name. Okay, this is called the Dutch Oven. Uh, <clears throat> I saw some delicious looking biscuits over at Jack Hall's place uh, here on YouTube. Uh, Jack Hall and his wife, friends of mine. Uh, and it reminded me of when I was a kid and how my dad used to make biscuits. Around 1940 or so, I was four years old, my mom and dad owned a 1931 Buick called her Betsy Buick. And a two-wheel trailer that uh, that was pulled behind Betsy when we traveled. And we traveled a lot uh, looking for someone to settle. Uh, this is <clears throat> after after we first came to California. Uh, and the trailer was pretty long, and they put a frame on it so that it held up a length of canvas at night. This made it look like a covered wagon. And Mom and Dad would, would sleep in it at night, sleep underneath that canvas. And uh, uh, the kids, uh, we slept on quilt pallets on the ground, usually under a tree, so the early morning dew didn't get us too wet. But that's another story I'll tell some other time. There is more to that. Anyhow, in the mornings while we were traveling <clears throat> and we would stop for breakfast, my dad always did part of the cooking. He always cooked the biscuits. He always kept a piece of rigid tin about 24 inches by 24 inches square. It was the kind that had waves in it, so it didn't bend easily. It was pretty rigid. And in the morning, my dad would, uh, uh, first he'd build a, a fire for my mother to use. He'd put rocks around the circle and one, one or two rocks out on the fire so she'd have a place to sit her pans and pots and a coffee pot and stuff like that. In those days, coffee, by the way, was boiled in a, in a pot. It wasn't, it wasn't any percolators or anything. Anyhow, and then after he got my mom started with her fire, my dad would dig a hole in the ground, just smaller than the piece of tin. Uh, so he'd place the piece of tin over the hole. He had to be sure that it wouldn't fall into the hole. It was good and solid on top. Then dad would take small pieces of wood and, and uh, whatever this would support real well and build a fire, and he would keep wood on it all the time so the fire stayed hot. And with a hole underneath the tin, it made a good Dutch oven, and that's what we call it, a Dutch oven. I guess it's still called that. Anyhow, he'd take a round, uh, um, uh, uh, or he'd mix a biscuit dough, mix it all up. I don't know how he, how he made it, however he made his biscuits. And then he'd smear a round pan with lard. We always used hog lard in those days. Everybody did, just very lightly, so the biscuits wouldn't stick to it. Then he'd roll and flatten the pieces of dough. He had a chunk of dough he'd... He'd take the piece like this and he'd <laughs> snap a piece off the end like that and roll it up and pat it and put it in the pan. Then he'd do another one like this and pat it and put it in the pan until the pan was full. Well, when the pan was full, by now the oven was hot. And Dad took that pan and he carefully put it in the hole underneath the, the fire, underneath that piece of tin. And then he'd cover the end of the hole with a board or another piece of tin so the heat would stay in. Now, and all this time, I don't remember ever seeing my dad check to see how the biscuits were coming. It seems like he always knew exactly how long it would take to bake them. And when he brought them out, they were always perfectly brown, and they tasted absolutely delicious. Well, while my dad was making the biscuits, my mom would mix flour and salt, pepper and grease in a skillet and put it over the fire to brown, and she'd keep stirring it with a spatula or with a spoon like this. And finally, all of it would get just brown enough. And then she took water and she'd pour water in and she'd stir this and stir it and stir it until it was just thick enough. And she would set it off, remembering always that when you finish your gravy and you take it off as it cools, it gets thicker. So you had to be 
very skillful to get it just right. That was water gravy. That's what what we use is water gravy. Sometimes if we had pancakes or even with the biscuits, she would put water in a pan and she'd boil the boil the water and then as it started to boil she would pour sugar in it. Uh, and then keep stirring the sugar like this and pretty soon as that water never a whole lot at the time usually just enough for us to, to eat in the morning as that water boiled and boiled it would get a little bit thicker just as it started to thicken just a little bit she'd take it off the fire and let it cool and that was sugar syrup we used sugar syrup and and water gravy and she always had these you could buy these blocks of margarine they're about this size and about that thick and they're white. They look like grease. They look just like white grease, but they're not. It was margarine. And in the package, with the package, you got a little packet of yellow coloring. And you would take this out and put it on a plate or something like that. And you would sprinkle that yellow coloring all over it. Then you would take the margarine and you'd mix it all up like this with your hands or with a spoon or however you wanted to do it. Anyhow, when you finished with it, it came out yellow looking just like butter. And I must say it tasted pretty good too, as I recall. Anyhow, she had mixed that block of margarine with the color, and it came out looking just like butter. And I tell you, we'd get Daddy's biscuits out there, and each of us would get a plate, and we'd uh, put a little bit of that water gravy on it, you know, and a little, little, uh, uh, I mean, uh, little uh, uh, water syrup, sugar syrup, if we had it, and and put some of that margarine inside those biscuits, <laughs> and it would melt, and, and I, they were absolutely delicious. You could smell them down the road a mile. Uh, and and it was just uh, wonderful. We'd sit around the circle around the fire there, each of us with his plate and with our biscuits and gravy and a little bit of uh, sugar syrup. Uh, and uh, the mom and daddy would drink coffee and us kids would have a cup of water there. And uh, it didn't seem like much. It doesn't seem like much now, but I tell you, in those days, that was a that was a nice meal. And we spent uh, we spent a lot of days like that. The good thing about it was is uh, the whole family got to eat together and it didn't seem to matter if we were out on the side of the road or sitting on peach crates inside of our little shack on Caneo when we finally, when my mother finally bought that little cabin, just being together and eating together and, and uh, uh, enjoying each other's company is, is uh, what made it, it wonderful. And them really was the good old days, I have to say it. Okay, this is JC. Uh, <clears throat> I hope you enjoyed some of this and I'll see you down the road if the good Lord's willing. And the creek don't rise. <laughs>